Hello YouTube and welcome to, quite frankly, a bit of a weird one. I guess I should say it's Monogatari episodes 4 and 5. Zoko Wari Monogatari, I should say, but not in the way you would think. So, full cards on the table. I attempted, attempted, to record yesterday. Uh, I say attempted because I think the end product is terrible. I do not recommend that anybody watches what I made yesterday. It will be made available to watch but I strongly advise against not watching it. Unless, of course, you like people ripping into Zoko Obari Monogatari episodes 4 and 5 for seemingly no apparent reason, but, but I know the reason. And it's taught me, I guess, a lot about myself and this channel and what not to do in the future. So yesterday, very, very early in the morning, I finished editing Girls and Panzer, right? So I put that onto render. I woke up at 3 a.m., right? I dragged the file into YouTube and let it upload before fully uploading the video at 6am when that process had finished. That was because everything was late. Everything was late all last week. This video is even late as a response. I'm just perpetually late now for some reason. Needless to say that despite it being my day off, I didn't really feel in the mood to do stuff with the channel. But I persisted anyway, and I think I saw the results of that. It was a frankly joyless reaction where I reacted to both episodes kind of back to back, because I finished episode 4, was unsatisfied, finished episode 5, was also unsatisfied. But again, it's not you, it's me. And I've come to realize that after today, because despite working like 8 hours today, I'm feeling so, so, so much better about stuff. And I think I'm ready to give the episodes another shot. I don't think I gave it my darndest, bestest try yesterday, and I think I'm going to try again here today. That's not to say there aren't things I don't like about it, because there is a few things that I don't like, but there's also some things that I think I can discover that I think I'll like a little bit better. So that's the my personal stuff out of the way. Again, the reaction's going to be in the description. Please don't watch it. It's bad. Please, please don't watch it. Because, and the only reason I'm providing it is because I know people will ask for it anyway because they just want to see it. And yeah, if I see complaints about it, I'll get to separate the people that only watch the uh, the reactions and not the actual video. So that'll be fun as well. Either way, I should bring up the Google Chrome, Google Docs. That's the word, Google Docs. I should bring up the Google Doc where I have written a little bit of summary of the two episodes that I reacted to yesterday. I had a little bit of a second look today. I uh, had a little bit of a think overnight as well and have come up with a few ideas. So again, this is weird. I have knowledge of episodes four and five right now, both. So when I say stuff like Augie's, Aragi's shadow inverted person thing, because that's, what re that's what's revealed at the end of episode 5. I, I know that for a fact. So, like, there's, there's, there's no... Again, you, I think you guys know. So I've come to a broad theory overall based on that piece of information that the world we're in, the mirror world, can kind of be seen as an orgy world. A world in which everything is proper. Everything is right. Everything is correct. And it's weird that it feels so weird to us as a result, right? So again, Aragi is Orgi, Orgi is Aragi. So now a lot of the interpretation stuff makes a whole lot of sense. A lot of it's through Aragi's lens, or Orgi's lens for that matter as well. So all my stuff about POV <laughs> of Nadeko and POV of Sodachi now becomes a little bit more justified, I think, as well. That that sits a little bit better with me. So that's my that's my broad theory. It's like orgy world. We're, we're in orgy world right now, and it's a little bit tipsy-topsy as a result. You get a little bit of the, the gender roles stuff, the male-female stuff as well going on with the uniforms, which is fun as well. I, I think that one reveal kind of clicks a lot of things into place for me, and it, it kind of sits a little bit better as a result. The other thing that I need to stress, and this is a structural thing, you need to tell people when they watch Zoku Awari Monogatari to watch it all in one one go. Like, I don't care if they complain or anything. I don't care if they're like, oh, but it's set up in ep It's not set up in episodes. It's very, very not. It's not set up to be episodic. It's not set up like this at all. You need to consume it all. Otherwise, you'll just be full of fucking questions. So I found that between episodes, j they just have terrible cuts. I'm sorry. Like, you just, you cut at the worst points, the points where you want to continue the most, and the points that don't explain certain things in a way that is bad for my format. So, again, in the future, if you see somebody doing something like I have been doing here, tell them to react to it all at once. It's very important, in my opinion. It's just, yeah, something that wasn't meant for this form turned into this form. There's a different way you write TV to the way you write a movie. It's just how it goes. Even now I'm making inferences, what I could say could be completely wrong, right? Like, 
There could be something else going on in this last half an hour that I haven't seen. We're going to say there probably is. There's probably going to be a lot more explanation of what certain things meant at certain points. A conversation between Augie and Araraki, among other things, you would think. Now to get a little bit critical, and I don't think it's either party's fault, right? This is just a really, really poxy spot for the story to end. <laughs> We've essentially built up all of our steam, right? We've got into our conclusion in Awari Monogatari's second season, and then we've just got a little bit more that serves as not really an epilogue and not really a continuation, just kind of a weird in-between point, right? And again, I've had another thing about this. It kind of makes sense. It kind of mirrors where Araragi is in his life in a weird in-between point, right? That's If that's by design, it's very well done. Uh, it also explains why the world's so weird and fucked up, the, the, the mirror world, right? And why it doesn't make sense. He's lost a lot of his personal identity, that being Araragi, and that is being reflected in the world. And we'll get into later that the world and the character, the individual and the setting, are very important to Zoku or Wari Monogatari and the effect that each has on each, right? The effect that specifically Araragi has on the world around him is something that's very interesting to explore with the knowledge from Awari Monogatari's second season. I think that's one of the better parts of it, really, so far. There could, there could be more. So yeah, I'm kind of rambling at the moment. I should just get onto my recap so I have a little bit more structure. But yeah, that's generally what I think right now before re-looking at the episodes, which I will do shortly. So first things first, we have a conversation with Human Shinobu. And this was quite interesting. I, I, I thought the colors were a little bit blown out and I don't love the decision to not show her face, but I understand why they did both. Like it makes sense lore-wise. Uh, she has no power and thus can't help with the rainy devil. So one of our major things was, hey, we should go try to get her power to one, get us out of this mirror world, or two, help with the rainy devil. Because she's a human, she cannot do neither. She doesn't carry the powers of a vampire in that same way. And I think in this portion, we get to talking about a lot of the inconsistencies that are forming through what we have going on, right? Similar to the Yotsugi uh, Oni Onichan stuff. The other one is she has unimaginable beauty to the point where being in her presence makes you want to kill her, kill yourself, not kill herself. That'd be, that'd be a little bit weird. Um, this is, again, summarizing. It's not exactly correct, but it's pretty much correct. Because uh, Aragi, upon you know hearing all these words from her and so forth, he's like progressively wants to gut himself and cut his own throat open and so forth. So that's a little bit interesting, I guess. Uh, how powerful a vampire Shinobu is is reflected in how powerful of a human she is. How powerful her nobility, her purity is, in the kind of opposite aspect. Yeah, just kind of a pure switching, swatching thing happening there. <laughs> Uh, the, the last point here, she believes Araragi is having an effect on this world just as much as the world is having an effect on Araragi. And we see this play out, right? Um, back at home, we start to see what this statement means. Uh, the Sodachi one's pretty heartbreaking. I didn't like that one very much at all. Um, well, I liked it, but I didn't like it, you know. Um, there was one with Karen and one with a frankly weird Tsukihi scene where she's trying to clean his mouth out with soap which was a bit weird. But yeah, I, I think that's an important point and will become more pertinent as we talk to Orgy about things, right? The kind of, again, Araragi may be representing the darkness and not the light, the, the dirt instead of the purity in our little dichotomy and that potentially spreading out to this perfect world, right? That's part of the, the I guess, analysis that I'm seeing right now. I guess more pertinently, we're back to square one and we need to use Yotsugi to help with the rainy devil as she's the only one really left that can assist with such a thing. So we go with Yotsugi to Kambara's house and she distracts the rainy devil, right? And then Araragi takes a bath, basically, right? Uh, the the kind of guy and toy stuff won't appear unless the person involved is in the bath. Just as he's about to hop in, he is interrupted by a naked guy and toy. There's another thing I'll talk about. This is a really horny segment of Monogatari in a way that I haven't really seen seen since Nisei, I want to say. There's a few horny ones in there, but this one's like really, really horny. So again, that was more to yesterday when I was not enjoying myself for various reasons I've gone into when I saw the horniness. The horniness didn't really do it for me. I felt like it was largely unnecessary. But considering how much of this is uh, Araragi POV, specifically a lot of the background of Araragi being around his disgust at his you know, male desires, for lack of a better term. Um, 
yeah, I, I think it's relevant. You could squint and say it's relevant anyway, and that's all that Monogatari fans really want out of it, so it's fine. <laughs> Either way, Toy kind of bathes with Aragi for a bit, and the conversation itself deserves more of a second look. I think a lot of it is planting for Hanamonogatari in a way that I really appreciate, um, and in that way, Aragi's advice in Hanamonogatari is coming from a really interesting spot, I believe. I guess the revelation, the major one, I think, is that the Rainy Devil itself is kind of the inversion person aberration thing of her you know what i mean it's like her orgy is the rainy devil the kind of inversion of whatever she was looking to do early in her life right the difference is that she casts that aside where araragi has taken his internal and i think that's mainly what this season's about as well the the presence of guy and toy here and then the orgy reveal at the end is telling i think there's the, the, there's there's meat on that bone for sure, even if I don't see it yet. The most plot relevant thing from this scene is that, like, she scratches his back while she's washing his back, which again, weird scene, um, telling him to go back to Naoetsu High School. And that is what he does after rendezvousing with Yotsugi. They decide to go their separate ways, Araragi going to the school, Yotsugi going to see Shinobu before going back to the shrine. Then we get to the, the big reveal, I guess. Araragi, in preparing to go back to school, puts on his uniform. That being one of the major keys to Aragi figuring out what happened. It it's a girl's uniform. It it's a it's a girl's uniform. One that looks a lot like Orgies. So when everybody has been saying that, hey, Araragi, you don't look like the Araragi I know, because the Araragi I know looks like Orgi. It's a very it's a very big difference, right? That that's what we've kind of been getting at this whole time and why everyone's been a little bit confused. It also explains a lot of the touchy feely stuff and the people the, the, the girls, right? Think about the sisters, right? They're they're okay being naked around him. Explains that. Explains that a lot, doesn't it? Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> at least I think it explains that um, I think it fits I think it fits really well even if it's a little bit obvious I feel like we're going back to the orgy well in a way that makes this feel a little bit ancillary and not that important but also I feel like it's leading into more stuff later on so again weird in between spot for the story it's a really poxy spot for it to end then there's another scene again I just need to have a really big look at this one again Yotsugi goes to the shrine sees Hachikuji Nadeko and then Hanakawa small version which is strange they're all celebrating drinking and and so forth uh, mostly due to Araragi getting close to figuring out the mystery and being able to put an end to all of this so there's also some stuff there around who hired black Hanakawa to do what she did so, yeah, think about it. Araragi then makes his way to school, to the classroom, which was so significant to him back during his first year, to find Orgi wearing his school uniform. Not hers, his. And yeah, that's a lot of the mirror stuff that we've been talking about through this arc, and then through the opening of the Wari second season, and again, so forth. There's some meat on the bone here. Again, in a way that today I can see, and that yesterday I didn't really see, because I was cranky. Literally, literally yesterday as well, I had like a sandwich, a big cup of water, and then just like sat down for an hour and felt fine. <laughs> also went for a run. So th th there's, your, there's your little tip for the day. If you ever feel like you're just a bit fed up, don't persist. Don't keep going. Take a break. Think about what your body needs and, and apply those things. I know this is a really weird thing for somebody in their 20s to be telling you, like, this is something that I should know. And I do know it. I just didn't know that I knew it, you know? Also, take mental health days. They're important. Anyway, I think I've rambled enough. Uh, we're going to dive in or back into episode four of Zoku Awari Monogatari right now. And we're back. So this is the conversation that we have with, with human shinobu. Um, and we're reading, I guess, a, a thing that Aragi has learnt from this process or from the reveal. So the most important thing out of this is that Aragi discovers that his own presence as an aberration, as Shinobu's vampiric minion, or master, depending on the way you say that relationship, it shouldn't make sense here either. In the same way that Shinobu can't be a vampire here because Mira, I can't be a vampire here because, because Mira right? We're, we're, we're interlinked like that. And again, now we're diving into another sub-theme of, I guess, all of Monogatari, this idea of aberrations. And, and I guess an interpretation of aberrations is, 
I guess, uh, outward personification of <laughs> internal angst. Yeah, which has been largely, again, the theme. Like, in a, in a perfect, pure, precise, proper world, like an orgy world, right, you wouldn't see such things as aberrations, right? And we kind of cancel that out. That's kind of like my orgy is like a mini specialist sometimes. Sometimes she uses aberrations to her advantage. Sometimes she doesn't, but clearly she wants to eliminate the one from her ragi and blah, 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 so forth, right? I, I think that, yeah, that's part of this world as well that we've created. And again, as I should say, that like Yotsugi calling him Oni Onichan, she doesn't know why because she only calls him that because he's a devil boy. Right? He, he, if he's not a devil boy, we don't call him devil boy. But just because there's no vampires doesn't mean there's no shinobu. As we learned back in Kizumonogatari, shinobu was a human once, and nobility at that. So again, sub-theme separating, I guess, shinobu from her aberration, that being vampirism. Like, even though it encom encompasses so much of her character, there was one point in her life that it didn't, you know? I guess that's just the way it feels for us, that she's so intrinsically tied to the term, but that wasn't always the case. As a result, uh, Shinobu's inner self is very, very sweet and proper and tender and all sorts of stuff, right? Like, think about Shinobu and the intense, I guess, big Shinobu we've seen in the past. Just the opposite of that. The opposite in the style of speaking and the, like... Like hiding in the light, so much pure light instead of the darkness. Yeah, th th there's quite a bit going on there as well. And sh she's basically just excessively polite here. Like in a way that I don't think the dialogue makes a lot of sense to my ears, but sure, it's going through like a language barrier too. So we need to be wary of that. This Araragi is different to the gentleman that we're acquainted with. The the Araragi of this world, which again is Orgi. I keep saying this, but also I kind of feel like that's what he wants you to think in a weird way. I think just the simple Orgi is the Araragi of this world reveal, and that being the only level to it, isn't enough to sustain half an hour. Just looking at it from a pure timing story perspective, I guess. We'll see what happens, but just keep in mind that I'm only working with limited information, as always. I'm missing the last half an hour of a movie. Basically, we explain to Shinobu now what, what our world is like relative to this one, but it feels like we take forever to get through conversations, again, because of Shinobu's or this Shinobu's speaking pattern. We are contrivances to one another, like the moon and its reflection in the water. It's a pretty good line, though. Like, the, again, moon, night, vampire, you know. Shinobu explains that she doesn't have the power to create a portal in the same way that, you know, vampire Shinobu would be able to, and Araragi feels like he's very sorry for that, to the point where he feels like self-harm, which, which is a bit weird. Again, we explained that Shinobu is, like, kind of in this ivory tower, not because she wants to be, because of everybody else's safety. If the general populace, like, see her they'll want to do similar stuff. And this is through a veil. Apparently, if you see her face, you'll feel this feeling even stronger. And then that explains this Onanoki scene, right? Where she's like, like, she notices Araraki, like, sweating in that. It's like, okay, we got to wrap this up because otherwise he will self-harm himself. <laughs> so Araragi, your visitation has brought or wrought havoc on this world, right? You were like the negative in this equation. Right. So, so I'm, I'm seeing more and more evidence to my interpretation, at least as we sit right now, being correct. Of course, we bring up those Oshino Meme words. Self-victimization makes me sick. Aragi had been thinking of himself as a victim in this case, that he had been drawn into this world and so forth, right? But it, that, that may not be the case, and he may be making the world worse around him in ways that he can't perceive right now, right? He may have had a tangible effect already on somebody like Sodachi. So even in this contrived world has managed to assemble some amount of balance, right? And you being here has put that in jeopardy, so you must return to your world as quickly as possible. That Onanoki there may seem normal to you, but to me she's transformed into something quite foreign. Look at this one, she fucking emotes, that's fucking weird. Even this effect can't escape Shinobu herself, who is losing, I guess, memory of the Araragi that she knows. Again, I'm thinking like an orgy more and more as he persists, as he persists in this world. And yeah, here we're like, don't tell him about, like, this world's Araragi. Don't tell him, don't tell him, don't tell him. And then we come to that realization by the end of episode five, I believe. Why, yeah, we, we keep withholding this information of what our Araragi is like, of this world's Araragi, because potentially this reveal is important for something we don't understand yet.
Another thing here is, you know, all those dirty things we described Araragi of this world doing? They may have all been jokes, right? Because Orgi in this state, again, this side of Araragi, wouldn't do these kind of things. That's what we mean by this line back here, where he's like, it's even worse if if I didn't do these things, if the me of this world didn't do stuff like that. These feelings of Araragi wanting to die continue as he tries to ask Shinobu to help him get to the bathhouse, which is his one remaining lead. This piece of advice is interesting from Shinobu. Do not brave this trial alone. Take care to gather reinforcements, which is something that I don't really believe he's he did. He kind of split off from Yotsugi and went off to, to the school by himself. Interesting. We'll see if this comes back to bite Araragi. And then we learn the reveal. Simply put, all those who bask in her glory end up wanting to die. Therefore, you shouldn't be near the princess for too long. That being Shinobu. Had he gazed directly at her beauty, you would have been overcome with the urge to slice your own stomach open. Araragi's first thought is that, oh, that's what, you know, Shinobu was like as a human. Well, kinda, but it's also just her inner self becoming external. It's her inner self, not necessarily her true self like a moon reflected in water, you know, you lose some of the, again, what Sodachi was saying before, you lose a percentage of it through the reflection. I guess this is the best line as well. She's a human that has transcended human limits. She is so purely human that she makes other humans want to die. I guess we mean reinforcements in the perspective that, hey, I need somebody to distract Kambaro while I hop in the bathtub. If, if that's what we mean by reinforcements and the next stage of our journey, then that's fine. We, we've done that pretty good. But if it bodes for the Orgy stuff, then I think we're in trouble. This is a pretty good joke as well, right? So we, we explain a bunch of factors about about Yotsugi herself as, you know, oh, I can't think of anybody that could do all these things when Yotsugi is the one that can do all of these things. Um, again, my idea during the reaction last week, or last week, yesterday, um, was that they should get whatever Senjukahara is in this world to... to have some say in that. I think that would be interesting, considering, again, the the actual Kambara's baggage about Senjogahara still being present, really. But again, no Senjogahara, which is, again, continued to be the case basically throughout the entire show. Cool. Very interesting scene here uh, with Sodachi after, you know, we basically clarify that Yotsugi's the perfect person to help Araragi with this bathtub stuff. So, Sodachi wakes him up, in a way that's, you know, very similar to the sisters, right? Like, you know, a, a lot of pushing, shoving, jumping on the bed. Uh, there's a little bit of, you know, weird sexual teasing stuff here that goes on, which is strange. But again, I think it makes more sense if we consider the, the orgy possibility. But again, this version of Araragi doesn't play up his part in what's going on, right? Like, Araragi just kind of leaves, right? After she attempts to flash him. And then we see this shot. Not great. As Shinobu described... I'm a negative influence. This shot too. Heartbreaking! Fucking hate this. That's terrible. <laughs> Oyakura, who's been living in the same house and sleeping in the same room as me for years, likely took the brunt of that influence. That negative influence, maybe I'm partially responsible for the world I've created back in my own world, right? The same way that the world affects me around me, I may have a profound effect on the world, right? Which I think is a very Nisio Sin writerly way of saying it right because again when you're breaking down like characters and and, and setting and stuff you got to think about the the influences there and we're making that very very apparent through this parallel world i think it's quite clever anyway i i, I like this part so Aragi kind of brushes off karen before running into sukihi and again very naked uh again the way i'm justifying this is that like they think that he's orgy so they're not as embarrassed about having no clothes on not that they've, you know, been very prudish before, but but I digress. What we do here is a bit weird. We get Suki here to wash our face. We suggest teeth brushing um, initially as well, which I think is quite funny. But um, yeah, this this scene's fucking weird. I'm going to give it a second look and see what I can see. But it may just be some fucking weird shit. I don't know. So yeah, she, she kind of washes his mouth out with soap and washes his face and makes Aragi grab the, the soap with his face and stuff. I might accidentally stab you in the eye, something that comes to fruition later on as well. This all happens very quickly, but this is kind of the last thing that Aragi sees in the reflection of the water as it goes down the sink. It, it, I guess it's an image of him that doesn't look like the him right now, right? I think that's what we're getting at. And it's very, very, very quick. 
Okay. So that's another indicator that this bath idea may be the right direction. It's another it's another water reflection thing, right? Again, I noted that very early in episode one, that there was kind of a water droplet and the reflection of that is what kind of grew into what we see now. Which again, as I've talked about, links into the guy and toy stuff around water and poison and cleansing and everything else in between. Again, fair criticism, I think. We don't really take a second to explain what we just saw. I think that works way better in a, in a, in like a book, right? You can clearly read a line that says, Aragi noticed a change in the reflection that was a little bit odd, right? And then, okay, I guess we're meant to infer from here when uh, Yotsugi says, oh, this isn't this a game changer? We found out that the portal's in your bathroom. We're supposed to infer that Aragi discovered some things whilst washing his face, or Tsukihi washing his face for him. Yeah, I think that works better as a, as a written piece of prose. It was gone in a flash, but like I, I saw like this. Yeah, look at that, it's some orgy mouth Aragi stuff. I guess the thing is when we're, we're not like dwelling on it too much because it would make the reveal at the very end a little bit obvious, I guess. It's an interesting thing that the, the trigger is face washing as well. Um, another thing where, hey, now I'm getting somebody else to wash me for me in Guy and Toy a little bit later on, that kind of works a little bit there as well. I'm going to the bathhouse to cleanse. I'm cleansing myself. I'm making myself less dirty, more pure, more proper. Something in that, maybe? Aragi becomes more and more distressed and wants to get this over with, basically. He doesn't want his effect to linger on Sodachi more and more. He just wants to get out of here, man. I guess this is interesting as well. Like, this part here, where, where Yotsugi, like, introduces the idea of, hey, why don't you just stay here? Wouldn't this be fine? <laughs> it's almost like the world itself trying to convince Araragi to go the Orgi route to become more proper again. Like, like to... It's proving Orgi correct. Isn't the world great? This world is based around Orgi. Wouldn't it be great if you just stayed here? You could. You could if you chose to become like Orgi, right? You're too hell-bent on going home that you have no intention of getting acclimated to this world. So maybe if you give that philosophy a try and try it on for size, you'll, you'll discover some things. Aragi starts to consider the concept here like, well... Oyakura's feelings aside, I still don't want to like trample on them, right? But I've got too much riding on the other world, right? My, my real world for me to leave it for this one, right? So still kind of weighing that option up. Like it's possible that I could try to fit in here, but it's just not, it's not entirely feasible. As long as there's hope to return back to the way it was, I'll put my life on the line for that, for that hope. Yotsugi kind of retorts here, even this idea isn't foolproof. Even if you were able to fully immerse yourself in your current role, the real Aragi Koyomi could reappear at any moment. Orgi, right? And then that, that use of the word real. What is real? What is fake? Right? This this is almost the fake Aragi here. And the, the, the real Aragi is Orgi. And again, what does all this mean? It's all up in the air, blah, 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 blah. I've had videos and videos talking about this. The chances are he replaced you on the other side, which I guess something that I haven't really talked about very much. Like, is Orgi just out there wreaking havoc on the other side while Aragi's trapped in here? How does time work in that regard? It's going to be a bit of a weird episode next episode, that being six, um, I think, as we continue. Never mind five minutes, I can buy you five hours. So Aragi, you go in the bath, chill out for five hours, or up to five hours, and then I'll get you out of there. Unlimited Ruruboku. And then, yeah... Battle ensues while Aragi hops in the, into the bath. So it's kind of interesting, right, that, that Yotsugi's off fighting, like, Kambaru, or this manifestation of Kambaru, and then we run into Gai and Toei over here. That's a little bit of something going on there, right? She's, like, currently using the Rainy Devil, the Rainy Devil that is so intrinsically linked to Gai and Toei. Just some clever stuff writing-wise I like. So yeah, it goes for a bath, gets interrupted. This is, this is Gai and Toei, everybody. So... This is also the mirror world. So, like, where's the rainy devil? Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, th there should be a similar dichotomy between the rainy devil and Araragi playing out here, right? At least a little bit. That being if she wasn't dead, of course. I don't know. It, it, it's one to follow, for sure. And maybe justifies some of the Numachi Roka stuff in Hanumanogatari in a weird way. I don't know. Weird. It's weird. Either way, your presence gets kind of that Orgi, Araragi, Guy and Toy, Rainy Devil relationship in the mind. I think that's a clever writing decision, at least initially. Yeah, basically this episode goes like, oh yeah, I'm Guy and Toy. Who are you? Answer me or I'll send you to the afterlife. 
and then episode end, and I'll get the next one up shortly, and we'll continue our conversation. So in this part of the story, we get a lot of mileage out of sexy woman, <laughs> which is fine. I mean, we're allowed to. At least this one's of age. Um, but yeah, it just stands out. I think it stands out a little bit too much. Um, I guess yeah, hmm. if you're making this, if you're this far into Monogatari that you're watching this, you're going to be at least you know, that way inclined to be liking this kind of stuff, I think, or at least accepting of it. So, so sure, we'll, we'll go with it. One thing about a character design that I quite like is the eyes. I think they're similar to Kambaru in a way that I really appreciate. Um, kind of, again, like a weird mix between Guy Nizuko and Kambaru, um, despite looking, again, she is, she is Guy Nizuko's older sister, correct? She does look way older, considering Guy and you know, purposely looks really young. So I guess the most interesting part here is like, why are you here? Which I'm guessing we'll get into more and more as we continue, um, probably in that conversation with the Orki, because she doesn't exist in our world. She she died, she got hit by a car. <laughs> is that out? hmm, traffic lights? Thoughts? If the traffic lights were working proper, she wouldn't have been fucking run over. <laughs> did she get run over or did she another car run into another car? What was the accident? What was the idea of the accident there? What was the, I guess, background of it? Yeah, food for thought. I just have some weird thoughts about, like, a, in a proper world, in an orgy-based world, would such a thing have happened to Guy? And, would she have died? And thus, in this world, in this proper world, on the other side of the mirror... Did she die? But there's this, this also is like this weird goo in the water, like here. Like what's what's this miasma of death? What's that about? I do not know. I guess you could see it as almost similar looking to the rainy devil. Sure. One thing we note here is that it's weird that she's asking questions about Kambaru, right? Why why are you asking such questions? Has rainy devil Kambaru been like that for longer than we think? I do not know. Yeah, that response was a little fishy, specifically talking about the breasts. Like, why wouldn't you know what your own daughter looked like? Right? There's some, there's, there's more here to happen, I think, and that's going to be next episode job. Like, almost like she doesn't have knowledge right now of anything that happened past when she died in our world. Is that like a weird contrivance thing that's going on as well? A weird contradiction that we kind of explain away? Similar to other ones we've seen in the past in this part of the story? Maybe. We'll continue to watch, though. Another part here. She's not really like what, you know, Guy Nizuko explained her to be like, right? She's she's pretty laid back and chill. Apparently, <laughs> her man, her words, not mine, was the one that chilled her out a lot. My man changed me. I chilled back and laid back a lot after I got married. But again, it's almost like she's uh, she's reading Aragi's mind. So Aragi didn't say anything there. She kind of just responded to his thoughts. And in a similar way here, I'm not as lazy as the writing for this arc, though, so cut me some slack. So, <laughs> like, this is something Aragi said earlier in the story. Are you reading Aragi's mind? What's going on here? We're sharing a bath. What's going on here? Yeah, and then we, we it's like she can read my mind, focus on miasma goo in the water. Thoughts? Maybe. We, we also fit her into the grand pantheon of, of what do you know, right? I told you it doesn't matter what I know or don't know. Compare this to Guy Nizuko's I know everything, Hanakawa's um, I don't know everything, I just know what I know, and then Orgi's I know everything about you, Araki. So, another character that, that fits into this. Araragi ends this scene by calling her a genius, that she hasn't spent much time with Araragi, but has picked up all these things about him. Again, is there a supernatural twist to this, or is she just a really good people person? And these talents have grown more and more as she's persisted long, like, after her equivalent in our world, right? So Araragi comes here looking for advice, but Gaian says that... You know, I'm not the person that should be advising other people. Be that as it may, I'd love to lend you a hand considering your situation and your relationship with Saruga. However, I'm reluctant to butt in without being asked. We were talking about knowing and not knowing earlier. But it's never that simple. Reality isn't so black and white. Reality isn't so light and dark. In that way, I guess, Izuko kind of strived for, like, this binary system, right? Like, un uh, like removing unknown knowledge, right? Knowing everything, <laughs> making a stark contrast between right and wrong, light and dark. Compare this to Hanakawa, who, again, look at the hair, 
made some kind of peace between the two, some kind of level of grey. However, both of these characters fail to see the bigger picture. Truth is, one's knowledge is often riddled with errors. And this is where we jump into our discussion of perspective. What you perceive as right and wrong influences everything. That's why it's so important to expand your horizons and make sure that you're getting the most best accurate view of things. I like this portion. Again, justifies some of the production decisions early in the story, where there's different things going on with the different character POVs, when different characters have point of view. So, Aragi doesn't really know what happened with Hanakawa during Nekoshiro, right? Like, are you sure you know what's running through her head? We do, we the audience do, but Araragi, no clue. He's not along for that ride. And in that way, I think this world is intrinsically linked to an Araragi point of view and his perspective on things and blah, 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 blah. Like, that's what I think we're trying to get at here and what Augie's eventual inference from this introduction of this point will be. However, Guy Nizuko also has knowledge that Hanakawa was abroad. How? Like, she specifically has knowledge of his world, right? Not this fake world that we assumed that she persisted in, of his world in particular, which is one that's stumping me. I don't really know how to justify that one yet. You followed that enchantment all the way here. How funny, reminds me of a disciple I once had. He was fascinated by enchantments, curses, and the like, but you shouldn't rely on them. Because this bathtub in particular, just a regular garden variety bathtub, your mental state is the only thing it'll reflect. In that same way is his water regular water. It only reflects the person who viewed it. And Araragi is the one who drew himself into this situation, whether it be Araragi on one side of the mirror or the other. That's what I think we're trying to get at here. Also, I think the disciple we're implying is, is Kaiki, but correct me if I'm wrong. Because I forget the backstory, but I think, yeah, he was like head over heels for her, but she was also in a position of power kind of over him like a level above. I guess now we're saying like, hey, like you kind of followed this enchantment of this bathtub all the way here. It'd be kind of rude to leave you with nothing. So I'm going to give you like a backwash. And when she washes his back, she also, you know, gives him the next step in the trail. And this is the reveal, right? We haven't just met for the first time, Araragi. You've met my left hand many, many times before. So now we, 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 we reapply this knowledge to a lot of stuff in the past. So when it's like, hey, Kambaru, I'm kind of trusting you with this monkey's paw that is going to, that is, that isn't a monkey's paw. You're going to make wishes on it and like it's going to see through to the true intention of it. It's going to see through to the real, right? Th applying that to Suruga monkey and our implications there because it's not like, because we think it's a monkey's paw, right? We think that it's kind of like a fake thing that twists uh, a motive, but it doesn't. It takes what she truly believed down inside her. She really wanted those kids to get hurt. So those kids get hurt. She really wanted Araragi to fucking die and get out of the picture with Senju Kahara. And that's what it does. It sees through to the true, to the real. And I think, yeah, we continue to talk about this. So we're, we're putting a pin in it. We'll keep, we'll come back to this. Of course, Araragi is of the opinion that you shouldn't have left the monkey's paw in Kambara's possession. You know, I don't know if that's in her best interests. It's also not in... My best interests either, because she tries to kill me. And yeah, it's not like I had a clear goal in mind when I left it behind. I didn't intend for it to help her, or for it to torment her. But maybe to help her find her own way through things. Which in the end it does. Again, through the Numachi Roka stuff in Hanumonogatari. So yeah, I, I don't know if we knew this information or not. Or it was just heavily implied to be the truth. Because it wasn't particularly surprising to me in the, in the reaction portion. Um... The, the rainy devil, the progenitor of the monkey's paw, is her alter ego in the same way that you have your own Aragi in Orgi. In that way, did we never really meet Kambaru here? We're not fighting Kambaru. Maybe it's just the rainy devil and we tricked ourselves into thinking it was Kambaru. Right? And it's actually just Guy and Toei's rainy devil that's protecting this place. And that both sides of them are on this side of the mirror as well. Or maybe I'm just talking absolute hogs trollop and don't know what I'm what I'm saying. I don't really know. Again, we really need that last episode. It's almost like this piece of the story isn't designed to be split up into six different portions. We talk about watching our own back through a mirror. In particular, this shot's really good because it reflects a famous scene from Hanamonogatari. Very cool. One where we see a lot of Aragi in the review mirror. One thing I implied when Aragi was going to like pass away was going back to this scene and kind of thought for a minute, did Aragi really exist here? Because we only really saw him in the mirror 
right? That was one of the things I was thinking, but it turns out Aragi probably did exist here. But yeah, it's food for thought regardless. Mirrors are tools that let you view yourself from different angles. The rainy devil served as my mirror to my, you know, pretty cold calculating exterior, right? There was actually this beast inside. Didn't you exterminate it by giving it a name? You, you, you erased this side of yourself, right? So in that similar way, Saruga is going to have to face herself someday in the same way that that both my sister and I did, that being Gain Izuko and Gain Toei, right? She's going to have to... F is, is that, is that Hanamonogatari? Or is that later on? Now that I know about later on. Perhaps I wanted this arm to serve as a bit of support when that time comes. Interesting. Again, this feels like another setup for later. Like, Meme mentioned it, right? But what would happen if we got all these pieces of the Rainy Devil back together? Wouldn't bad things start to happen? Isn't there some implied stuff about Orgy and the, the devil component stuff that we learned from Hanamonogatari? Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like there's something there. That's kind of interesting, right? I, th I think, okay. One thing in the wake of Awari Season 2 is I think we've saved Orgy, but Orgy's going to continue to do like weird fucking Orgy stuff. Like she's not our friend, you know. Like, I don't think she's on our side. I think she's going to continue to be a bit of a nuisance, a little bit of a thorn in our side as we continue. There hasn't been a full reconciliation there. Maybe, yeah, because I, I feel like Orgy, or at least Aragi, or, you know, both two sides of the same coin, are responsible for whatever Zoku or Wari Monogatari, whatever this mirror world is. So, again, just food for thought as we continue. Another thing we see here is, is the, the, the bath turned into, like, tar. It turned into a bit of a swamp thoughts it was kind of like that growing miasma out of out of guy Nezuko, not guy Nezuko, out of um guy and toy and then this stuff where like she's kind of fading in and out of consciousness in, in and out of our reality what what is going on here <laughs> there's more i think we're going to talk a little bit about this conversation next episode i think we're going to learn some more things in the end learn from me take this same old adage if you if you can't be medicine, be poison. Otherwise, you're just plain water. Is this almost a cautionary tale that she didn't that that removing this side of herself, this rainy devil, was actually a bad thing? Was in that process turning herself into plain water? Don't be a fence sitter. Broadly, it's what this this is about. Pick a side. Is removing a side not picking a side? I don't know. I wonder if the true intention of these words came across to Kambaro, she says. The words I spoke to her were probably directed at myself more than anybody else. Although she saw me as a parent, and my sister saw me as an older sibling, I saw myself as nothing but a crybaby devil. And a coward, whose only option was to exterminate said devil. Potentially feeling jealous of Araragi's constitution to do the opposite, and not exterminate. So Araragi, you must commit to the choice you have made. Whether it's darkness or light, there's no question it's your partner. And then after saying partner, disappears, the whole scene changes, it's less dark than it was, potentially implying that a lot of the darkness was around Guy and Izuko. And what, and what does that mean? Yeah, what, was she ever really there? I don't know. And then on his back, now it's a high school in kind of reverse kanji on his back. Or kanji or... Doesn't look like kanji. Kinda? No, it's definitely like katakana, is it? Now we're under that scene, which was a lot. Uh, Yotsugi's basically like... You shouldn't have done that, but also now we have a lead, so that's good. Aragi interprets this as less advice and more of a trial, you know? The, the, the next lead in the trail that we're crossing. Another important part here is that when we try to show these markings to Yotsugi, she doesn't see them. They didn't persist, right? It was only an illusion, right? Like a lot of the guy and stuff from that scene before, she kind of just fell into midair and was turning into like TV static, right? As you can see, I'm skipping through a ton of the visual jokes here, which are broadly pretty good, this one being a pretty overt clockwork orange reference. Aragi trying to justify himself as not the liar, and that he was actually telling the truth, despite evidence to the contrary. Therefore, why don't we split up? You go to Naoetsu High School, I'll go see Shinobu, and then we'll kind of reconvene in the middle once we get or gather some information but i feel like we're going to win before that with this whole orgy situation thing so yotsugi is still interested about the black hanakawa side of things who convinced black hanakawa to save him from the rainy devil right who who pulled that string i think we implied that it was orgy but again we're going to give it another read so yeah she's on the journey to find the black hanakawa side of the the lead right they've technically got two leads the black hanakawa 
kind of mismatch thing that she's kind of getting info from an outside source in a weird way and you know the the, the Araragi Naoto High School that's the other that's the other lead and yeah she really doesn't want to go to Naoto High School which is a bit weird don't really know what that's about yeah they agreed to meet back here in three hours right which doesn't happen um before going to the shrine but I think she sees fireworks from the shrine and then makes her way up there and sees what's going on. I think that's what happens. Oh, I missed this line. Yeah, I'll go home and change in my uniform. I'll look less suspicious that way. And that's where we get into the uniform stuff. In hindsight, I should have given more thought, more weight to Ononoki-chan's thoughts that this is like dangerous, right? That I should prepare myself for something. I was completely oblivious to the terror of Guy and Toe. Interesting. As there's like thunder in the background. En route to Naoto High School, I would encounter a hair-raising horror the likes of which I'd never seen before. And this is where we start talking about the uniform. There it is. There's my uniform. Hello. That's my uniform in this world. The, the cookie crumbles. <laughs> if people were turned inside out rather than reverse left to right in this world, if Araragi Koyomi was living as Oshino Orgi, like Hanakawa Subasa did as Black Hanakawa, and, you know, as Kambaru did as the Rainy Devil, and, and so forth, right? It isn't consistent across everybody, but you know what I mean. My uniform would certainly have been changed from a boy's to a girl's. Very cool. Because I'm Augie. I'm Augie in this world. Another thing that it would explain is, don't we say that Araragi and Hanakawa were at odds? They hated each other, as opposed to their relationship in our world? Doesn't that justify this, right? If, if we've learnt anything about the Hanakawa backstory stuff and what, you know, Augie's philosophies are, then aren't they incongruous and would lead to conflict, right? But then how would that justify why Black Hanakawa saves Araragi? There must even be another source of that information, maybe, that somebody's telling Hanakawa to save this version of Araragi. I do not know. But that's my theory. This proves that the Aragi Koyomi of this world was Oshino Orgi all along. I am currently taking this as fact. That's where a lot of my analysis today has come from. This could be thrown on its head next week. I don't know. Again, this isn't meant to be consumed in an episodic format. And then big old fan service moment, Araragi gets to put on the, 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 the girl's uniform. It's funny. We can laugh at it. It's, you know, it's a good gag. Araragi continues to say that it's strange, since I... Considered what I just said as a fact, I readily accepted the fact that my uniform had become a girl's. Is this a misinterpretation by Araraki? That he made this interpretation and then this kind of feeling manifested itself on the world? If that makes any sense at all. Or maybe it's less complicated than that and I'm trying to look for complexity where there doesn't need to be. Yeah, I guess the weird part is that by that logic his wardrobe should be full of women's clothes. You know, it's still like all his normal clothes, so what gives? But of course it'd be ridiculous to expect much sense from this world. It's meant to be topsy-turvy and kind of inconsistent. Yeah, just as this world was influenced by me, I was influencing this world, or being influenced by this world. Like kind of turning into Augie slowly through these thoughts. Is this less of what I thought and maybe a trap to turn, to change his mind into like an Augie type situation person? Look how good the world could be if you were more like Augie. Again, I could be like completely fucking off base. I just don't know. I'm fading away, just like the title I lost upon graduation. I may be turning into Augie. The Aragi Koyomi we know may disappear. This was the hair-raising horror in question. My own existence. Oh no. I'm changing from one version of myself to another. And this is kind of the metaphorical process of that. So then we check back in with Yotsugi. She gained nothing of import from those talks with with uh, Shinobu. She then sees some fireworks and goes, oh yeah, that's a bit weird. She flies off to the shrine and then sees these three, including you. You're a bit of a weird one. I don't know about that. Preposterous. I was supposed to be the token little girl this time around. Funny. We can laugh. I, d I do not like cutesy child Hanakawa, but we're going to read her dialogue. I think it's pretty important. So Hanakawa Tsubasa-chan has many sides to her, though not as many as you. She views her childhood self as a separate entity living inside her. On that note, there's been no sign of the tiger around these parts, so there's some unseen sides to her as well. Seems like that's been resolved for good. Anyhow, is it safe to consider this is kind of an offshoot of Black Hanakawa or Normal Hanakawa? 
As a result of me being conditioned by Araragi, I find it hard to make heads or tails of this world. That's a bit funny. Again, Araragi having influence on the world around him. How can you guys afford to drink and party when Araragi's in danger? No need to worry about him. I just received an update from Tsubasa-chan over there. We were so wrong on so many levels. We being me, the girls, and Aragi Koyomi Kun, of course. Actually, one could say this whole world was the product of a huge misunderstanding, one which we're still not privy to even at this point. It's good to see that Yotsugi is just as confused as me, asking the question that are you guys all relaxing because this has basically reached its conclusion, more like approaching its conclusion. Needless to say, the one approaching it is Araragi Kun himself. In fact, that's all this ever was to begin with the tale of Araragi Kun coming to terms with himself. Which again, as I said during the reading, still don't really love this, because, again, here's my other major criticism of this. I feel like we're treading over the ground in a lot of different ways, right? Like, I think that the, the transition between high school college stuff's cool. That's a new step. That's a new analysis for Araragi. But this whole damn show has been about him coming to terms with himself. It's been about him growing up. It's been about him becoming an adult. What else was all that stuff about farewelling adolescence, if not this? Right? What were we ending when we ended Owari Monogatari second season? But also, it never really ends, which I also resonate with, because it, it, it's true. You, there's no finite ending where you're finally just, oh yeah, I'm an adult. I'm, I'm perfect now. It doesn't really work like that. All we gotta do is wait for him to notice his partner's presence. The situation grew complex when his partner slipped up and got locked away. If they hadn't, this continuation of the end would have been over in day one. They had me hop hop hopping around non-stop. Okay, here's my big brain theory that I just thought of, right? Because this whole time I've just been assuming the partner meant Augie. Partner doesn't necessarily mean Augie. Partner could be the one character that we haven't seen yet, that being Senju Kahara. I think this may be where we're going with the last episode here. I feel like that'd be a pretty cool conclusion, actually. It also fits with the, like, with the Hanakawa stuff. She could explain to Hanakawa to keep him away from the bathhouse. That would work, considering that Hanakawa and Senju Kahara have a pretty good relationship there. Also, uh, like, keeping Senju Kahara from Araragi because Senju Kahara could have gotten him out of this, like, position pretty easily, pretty quickly. I, th I think that works as well. Okay, wait, wait, we're now officially making that our new, like, prediction. That's what's happening. Yeah, cool. I probably don't need to go into this too much. This is basically just, like, him realizing that the classroom is the important thing. So he immediately goes to his third-year classroom, but, you know, it wouldn't be from the other years because there's nothing I'm particularly attached to from those years. However, there's one more classroom that I'm particularly attached to. Not... Happily, but, but negatively, right? One classroom in particular that meant more to me than any particular classroom anywhere else. A room frozen in time. And then, yeah, there she is. Hello. She does look cool for the record. Shoutouts to Augie. She's based, but, um, you know. Oh, it's kind of like um that same design from Augie classroom as well, like kind of see through the floor. And it's red instead of green. That's kind of neat. Took you long enough. Kept you waiting, huh? And then, yeah. Yeah, very angry looking Augie is waiting there for him. So, we'll get into it. You kept me waiting. I still think there's more to be uncovered here for sure. Um, kind of wish I could just watch the next one, but I but I can't. It's next week's job. So yeah, that, that, that that's the video, I guess. So what did we learn today? We learned not to jump into things when we're not feeling up to it. Because you've ruined it for yourself. Because upon this rewatch... I enjoyed myself a lot more. I found a lot more ideas to talk about. I found a lot more of it pretty interesting. I still think a lot of it's pretty ancillary. I don't think it's really progressing to the next thing yet. I think it's sitting in a weird in-between spot. I don't think it's an especially good prologue, or not prologue, epilogue, either. Because I think that the really good epilogue was at the end of a Wari second season anyway. There was like half an episode of really good epilogue. But yeah, I had more good things to say about it. I found some stuff to like. Which is more than I could say for yesterday. Which again, is still a write-off. You should not watch that video. However, two thumbs up. One more video to go. Well, not really. There's like two. But one more reaction to go. Let's say that. One more episode. Um, and then we're done. We're done with Monogatari. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit sad. But yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that next week. Yeah. Th th this, was, this was something. <laughs> I liked this more than yesterday. Cool. 
Still not loving it, but it's okay. We, we don't have to love everything. Um, I think I've justified through, again, this this kind of stuff, that I'm at least committed to giving it a fair shake, right? I wouldn't do this if I wasn't. You know what I mean? Anyway, we're, we're probably going to leave it there. This is very, very white on my skin. Hang on, let me get rid of this. Um, and yeah, next episode, last episode, we're going to reveal some things. We're going to try to remember some of the things I said today so we're not lost on ideas next week as well. One thing, yeah, I, I think I got too stuck into a lot of the other character stuff when, again, this is really an Araragi story. It's called Araragi Reverse or Koyomi Reverse for a reason. Either way, just my show stuff. So if you like that video, however weird it was, you can like that video. If you like it and you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I could do to improve my presentation, comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back, and the Discord. Join Discord, love Discord, 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 Discord. Sorry for the weird one, sorry for fucking up the reaction, but it is what it is. And yeah, catch you guys next week for the conclusion to the Monogatari series as it stands right now in its TV anime form. So yeah, I'll catch you next week for that. Thanks for watching. See you later.